Now, joining us to talk about this, Dr. Timothy Wheeler from uh, Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership. Dr. Wheeler, good evening to you, sir. Hello, Cam. Uh, great talking to you tonight. Now, I mean, I, there, there, there's so much here. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me that they, they, they come out with this. We need more gun control laws. We need, uh, you know, uh, parents need to be educated. And we all know that education won't be enough. Eventually, parents will need to be regulated as well. Uh, and, and they, you know, they do this while they note that the number of gun-related deaths among youth has dropped nationally, uh, is going down, and it, it continues to go down. This is, this is a good thing, Dr. Wheeler. Well, yeah, it's a great thing. And uh, those of us who have looked at the other side of the, the gun issue from the, the scholarly uh, side, uh, criminology researchers and uh, so forth, uh, have known this for a long time, and uh, even in, in its uh, policy, when it starts out here, the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, admits that firearm-related deaths among youth ages 15 to 19 has fallen nearly 60 percent uh, since 1994. And nevertheless, they keep going on and saying why we need to have all these restrictive uh, gun policies. Yeah, and so among the things that they're calling for, they, they want a, uh, a brand-new semi-auto ban. Um, they uh, also, uh, I, I, I guess, are again talking about, uh, well, let's see, the consensus uh, among injury researchers has been that the best thing to do for a child's safety is to keep guns out of the house, but each family has to make that decision on, on its own, they say, uh, because, you know, the Heller decision and the McDonald decision require that. Uh, but, I mean, it seems to me, Dr. Wheeler, these are folks who, uh, I, I, I'm curious, do you think any of them have ever actually owned a gun, held a gun, shot a gun? No, they haven't, uh, Cam, and I've met a number of these people. They are proud of the fact that they are ignorant about firearms. Uh, they, they start out with a, a very emotional, emotional position about firearms, and they're proud of that. Uh, they feel that, that that excuses them from really having to uh, pay attention to the science. For example, um, in this policy statement that just came out yesterday, mm -hmm. the updated 2012 policy of the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, the previous I I uh, edition was 2000, uh, um, they mention that, I have to say that there is one improvement. They no longer say that the Second Amendment uh, was intended to um, uh, provide for state militias to have firearms. Uh, they have finally recognized the uh, Heller and McDonald decisions, but in spite of those, they say, uh, you know, they, they say, um, yes, we do have the McDonald decision, which essentially uh, uh, keeps us from banning guns outright, but still pediatricians should work towards maximizing the restrictions as much as they can. So uh, these folks just really come from a philosophical orientation of fear and prejudice against guns and gun owners, and they're not going to let science get in their way. No, and, and you know, we, I mean, we've talked about this before, Dr. Wheeler. I've got five kids, and, you know, over the course of, of my fatherhood, um, you know, my gun storage habits uh, have changed at times. But, again, it's my decision, and it seems to me that if you follow the advice of these pediatricians who are so anti-gun, you know, they would be opposed to kids taking part in uh, things like JROTC or the 4-H shooting sports program or Boy Scouts uh, shooting programs or family hunting trips or even just taking your kid to the range. And they would prefer, it seems to me like they would prefer kids who live in households where there are firearms grow up ignorant about firearms. That's right, Cam. Uh, they use as their models for, uh, uh, for gun owners and kids who have guns uh, essentially criminals, you know, uh, juvenile criminals. Uh, and they make no allowance for and no reference to the groups that you've talked about, 4-H, uh, scouting, all of the uh, many gun safety and competition programs sponsored by the NRA and the state NRA affiliates. I'm sure that some of the attitudes in this policy statement from the American Academy of Pediatrics would uh, be news to uh, the people who run <laughs> the Californian Rifle and Pistol Association uh, youth shooting programs. Uh, this would be certainly be news to them and to their kids, who are sure. some of the most responsible uh, kids there are because they've, they've learned the responsibility of handling firearms safely. Uh, look, I mean, uh, Kim Rohde is a, a perfect example. You know, here's a, uh, a woman who 
uh, set Olympic records with her uh, medal-winning performance at the London Games. And, you know, her first Since Olympic... she was a teen. Her first Olympic Games, she was 18 years old. She started competitively shooting. She started shooting, I think, when she was 11 and started shooting competitively when she was 13. You know, we, I mean, apparently these pediatricians would be utterly horrified by, by that. Well, they don't want people to know about the Kim Rodies uh, and the Casey Eusebios, uh, all of the, the hotshot uh, kid competitors who go to the Olympics and who uh, win competitions against adults and who learn about firearms from their parents and from other responsible adults. That does not fit in with their template, with their image of kids and firearms uh, just being a dangerous combination from the get-go. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Wheeler, I mean, do you, what do you see uh, uh, happening as a result of this? Should gun owners be a little bit uh, wary of, of their pediatricians, you know, once again uh, asking questions, are you a gun owner? How do you store your firearms? Should we get ready for that? Well, I think that parents still have to be on guard, and, and this uh, policy that just came out from the American Academy of Pediatrics yesterday confirms that they still have to be on their guard, that they're still advising uh, doctors to uh, ask uh, to probe uh, parents and kids about firearms in their home, and their motives are not good. Uh, unfortunately, the American Academy of Pediatrics has not kept up with the rest of the world, but fortunately, the rest of the world uh, has learned about firearms. The public generally knows that firearm owners, as a whole, the, the vast majority of them, are very responsible people who very much care about firearm safety with their kids and are responsible and knowledgeable enough to do that on their own without the help of a pediatrician. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, listen, Dr. Wheeler, really appreciate you coming on the program, sir. Have a uh, good weekend and look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thank you, Cam.